is going to be a short video to remind you that not all explanatory variables are good at their job. That is, some explanatory variables are simply bad predictors of the response variable. Some explanatory variables are such bad predictors that they make a model overall worse. So it shouldn't just be the default move to throw all possible explanatory variables into a model, though that is what happens often enough in practice. What we would like to do is be able to determine how and when can we identify that such explanatory variables are bad predictors. Well, there's a whole slew of methods in the world of statistics to help you answer such questions. So I'm largely going to say there's no easy answer, but using the tools we've already seen, there is an answer that essentially goes like this. Consider the error in estimation of a particular predictor in your model. And then think about your data. Look at your data, make some plots of the data, and ask, based on the error and the plot of the data and the theory we have, is it reasonable to include such a predictor? We're going to go through a quick example in R right here to give a really simplified um, scenario of what this, what such an analysis and consideration of the error in a particular predictor might look like. So over here in R, I'm going to load the library ggplot2 as I've already done. You can see the plot is already up. I'm going to use the dataset cars from my GitHub repository. Um, and here is the plot, just going to recreate it so you can see there's nothing to it. The theory I have going here is that the weight of a car is going to explain the miles per gallon uh, that a car might get. And it looks to me that there's just a little bit of curvature here in this data, such that weight might not be a linear explanatory. There might not be a linear relationship behind weight's explanation of miles per gallon. Maybe there's something more complex. Now, I've previously warned that anything above quadratic terms in polynomial uh, models are dangerous. I'm going to show that, in fact, we can take a reasonable analysis of this model and indicate and at least show evidence that this term is unnecessary. So I'm going to use um, this bootreg method, which is going to resample my data set and then fit this third degree polynomial on my bootstrap resample data set and extract the coefficients themselves from that bootstrap resampled estimate of the linear model that contains a third degree polynomial in it. So we will use the library boots function boot on our data set named name df. We're going to call the method bootreg, and we'll do this, say, a thousand and one times. Lucky for us, it goes fairly quickly. Now, when you return the coefficients from a linear model that has a polynomial of order three, you're actually going to get four coefficients out, one for the intercept, one for the linear term, one coefficient for the quadratic term, and one coefficient for the cubic term. So what I'm particularly interested in is the confidence interval for the cubic term. Now, boot.ci does a little bit of rounding in its calculations, such that whatever it prints are not the actual doubles represented in the calculations behind the scenes. So I'm just going to go ahead and extract from the statistics in the element T of the object B, the fourth column from that matrix. The fourth column represents the one, two, three, fourth coefficient in my linear model. 
The fourth coefficient represents the cubic term, and this is the thing I want to calculate two percentiles on. Namely, let's just say the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile to get me an 80% confidence interval, but I don't think the size of the confidence interval is the big concern here. The big concern here is that we get a confidence interval that starts at negative 0 0.000000003. I think I got my zeros right there. I might have been off by one or two. But anyway, this is an incredibly small negative number. This is an incredibly small positive number. Now, if you look at the data, there's no reasonable meaning to a third cubic term in this polynomial fit through these data. A quadratic term is going to fit just as well, uh, just fine. And there's no logical explanation behind a cubic term in a polynomial explaining the relationship between a car's weight and its miles per gallon. In fact, I think something closer to like exponential would be better through these data, which I guess we could get by tacking on enough polynomials, but that's not the point here. The point here is quadratic. By looking at the data, by thinking about a reasonable relationship between miles per gallon and weight, and this confidence interval, which includes zero and is obnoxiously small, doesn't seem reasonable. With that, those three pieces of evidence in mind, I'm going to determine we could get basically just as good a model without this cubic term in our data set. That is a reasonable way to remove predictors from a linear model. Think about the relationship between your response variable and that predictor, given all the other predictors in your model. Think about what the logical connection is, if there's some sort of physical connection that is uh, often really helpful to think through. And then attempt to quantify the error you have in estimating that term, in this case, the coefficient on the cubic term of your linear model. And if all signs point to get rid of that term, then it's probably a reasonable thing to do within your model.